Hello. All right. Hi. Let's try to figure out how this works. All right. Hi. Sorry. Um, sorry for my delay, you both of you. Me, not the screen and stuff. And oh, I can't hear you. Let me. Is my volume okay. working? Okay. I'm also not that speaking oh. up. Okay. Okay. Because I'm connected now to the Zoom, but it's not seen. It's connected only to my information. Oh, I have to change it over here in the settings. The extra on media port. Got it. Um. Oh, I need to take off my background. Got it. Yeah. Oh, but it has my name. <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of that. No, it's uh oh, something that was there. it's in, yeah. It was an app for Clifton Strength. So another thing I'm coaching in. Gotcha. And I don't know how to get rid of it. It looks weird that way, doesn't it? <laughs> um yeah. I don't know. Oh, maybe it's one of those other things. No. Uh, I gotta add a color. Nope, that's no. In studio effect? No. No. I don't know if it all that. Definitely don't. It's online. Oh, yes, I got a little with birds. I could yes, have zoom it out. Oh, it's it's on a warmly. Maybe we can delete it. Scroll down. Is it? Does it show up at all? No, it's not in here. Oh, it got rid of it. Yes. So oh, wonderful. Right. Thank that you. I didn't even see that myself. Well, I appreciate that. All right. Um, so, Shed, you can hear us just fine. Let yes. Let me try something else. Hello, can you hear us? Is she nodding? Can you hear the, the mic? Yeah. Pretty well or no? Oh, are you plugged in? Wonderful. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to share screen. The and audio is actually much clearer at the computer. Too. What did you say, Shed? I think the audio might be clearer coming from the computer so, than from right, the microphone. Say, so on screen two, okay. currently seeing a PowerPoint, right? And now, are you seeing a web browser on screen two? Yeah, good. Okay, so we can switch between those. Right back to the PowerPoint. Okay, I think then we are all set. Thank you so much. I appreciate okay. it. You. And I appreciate getting rid of the the name thing. thing. I've been stuck on that for a little bit. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna unmute myself. I'm gonna mute myself now. Okay, so testing just close to the computer. Now I switched the sound systems. How is it sounding from the mic on the other side? Great. Great. Perfect. Yeah, I just had to switch the sound settings. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Shed. So do you want to, do you have slides to present? I remember from some of the other sessions yesterday, there was always some CTR, uh, CTR ones at first. Do you have that? Do you want me to stop sharing or? I think we only have closing slides. Oh, closing slides only? Okay, great. Uh, if you need it, just let me know and I'm happy to.
We're going to let a few more folks pop in from the front as well as virtual. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. Today. Um, We'll get it. I'll send you the Yeah. 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 Yeah
generative AI sources to support their exploration, while also being mindful of sort of the limitations they are. How can they use these ethically? Um, how can they then later on bring this into their day-to-day -day work? So that's a little bit about my interest. And then I'll finally pass it back to Liz. Yes, hello again. So I have a personal background that makes me interested in AI. As an undergrad, I studied music and thought when I started, I'll be a music teacher. That's what you do when you study music. Um, and wisely, it, within our curriculum, we had to go shadow teachers in our first semester. And the first day in a classroom, I thought, this is not for me. <laughs> And I had a moment of panic and thought, well, I guess that's it. My career is over, but I still loved music and I kept um, going in that program. But I struggled all four years to think, what will I do with this? How will I make this into a life that makes sense? Um, and of course I had one-on-one -on -one conversations with faculty. I went to my career center um, and we by no means want to discourage students from having these conversations. We think that's part of what we're advocating for today. But I wish I had tools and research options that helped me explore more broadly what I could do and think more creatively about how I could continue to incorporate music into my life, which I have, but it took a while to figure that out. Um, so in meeting with our students, as Caroline said, we think a lot about those who come in um, and aren't on a, what we would consider a traditional path or aren't in a degree program that naturally lends itself to a specific path. So we're hoping that through a combination of working with our offices and our one-on-one -on -one advising and resources and these, and these technologies and search tools that we can better prepare them to think more broadly. So that's a little bit about why we are here. And we wanted to, one thing we do in our advising is try to not assume we know why students come to us. So we wanted to take a moment and ask you if there's something that brought you here today so that we can try to make sure we capture that in our remarks, either online, feel free to write it in the chat, or if you're here, and if it's, I'm scared of this, it doesn't have to be something profound. Yes. So I've done, some work with, um... I'm a librarian, but I'm also working in the user experience world. Yes. And we did some testing with some of the career tools and we found that they're really good at connecting A to B, but they're not very good at searching in a non-traditional way mm -hmm. or helping people who have a non-traditional career find the right job. And mm -hmm. we were really worried about people being excluded mm -hmm. because of a logical algorithm. Right. So I was really hoping that you guys would address some of that. Yes. Great. Yes. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sang Hee Jung, and I work at first year advising as well as uh, AUX program. Mm -hmm. um, I remember last year's conference, uh, conference, the AI was the new thing, and we were all excited and all confused, and we had a lot of discussions on AI. Mm -hmm. And one year <laughs> passed, and today, I mean, I, I was um, online, yesterday for many conference sessions and I was like, we are still at the same place, kind of. Mm -hmm. It feels a little bit repetitive now. Mm -hmm. um, and this one popped up to me because it's very different. And AI and belonging, what does it mean? And I know that Kaga uh, School of Business is always forward looking. So I thought I'll learn something. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. Thank you. Hi, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm actually here be also because this is different from all the other sessions, but in the curve of innovation, the early adopters have clearly moved on and it's like old news. And you can see that with the students yesterday who are like, everyone's using Grammarly. And then you look around the room like, no, a lot of the people here are not using Grammarly. Right. And my, what was interesting in seeing is this cultural shift coming into AU and how different services are shifting with it. And so I'm interested in seeing how you're using now and starting to shift with the AI in the application of your job. Because everybody in this room, if we're not using AI, I'd be very surprised because not all of us know we're using it. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, if we're not using AI, we're gonna be obsolete. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see how this shift is happening within your service. Mm -hmm. And 
look and see how like niche our students mm -hmm. will have multiple careers. How can we help them in the future if they were in a niche, get out of their niche and explore? And, and I'm very interested in seeing how AI can help that. Great, thank you. And I, online, I know we have some comments. Uh, okay, so uh, Shireen mentioned, Thank you. Uh, so Shireen mentioned that uh, they are interested to learn more about how students can use AI in their career. And they also mentioned that they'll be using it in their class. Mm -hmm. uh, from Amanda, as an academic coach, I meet with roughly 35 students a week. And many of them talk to me about not knowing enough about future career possibilities. So I always want to know as much as possible to get students excited rather than see limitations. Great. Thank you all. That's really useful. And we'll keep those in mind. If there are things we don't address over the course of our remarks, we have time at the end too to just talk with you. So we wanted to give you a little more context about why we're doing this and articulate some goals for the day. Um, again, part of what motivated us was that students struggle to translate their curriculum into unfamiliar career paths. One other thing that's really important to us is that basic searches might not reveal what we consider the hidden elements of the job search, things like salary, things like the history of an organization or the politics, which can really matter when it comes to feeling like you belong in an institution. Um, and some of these search engines provide these details that you might not get from a conversation or a simple Google search. In terms of our goals for today, we're going to share with you some resources that we use in our advising um, and external resources as well um, so that you have practical tools going forward. We are also going to share with you what are called uh, the career competencies, that which help sort of give us a framework in our conversations with students about what skills they need to be developing regardless of their career path. We're gonna do some interactive work on prompts. Um, so I saw Caroline do a workshop for COGAD students that was, she's a great presenter and that was a lot of what motivated today was seeing how can we practice this together and see how the effectiveness of a prompt really impacts what comes out. Um, and then finally, just having a sense, of course, of the opportunities, challenges, and limitations of the current career-related AI tools. So I'm going to turn it over to Gihan to talk more about AI and career services specifically. Thanks, Liz. Um, so let's talk, uh, this is sort of a broad overview of how we're going to address the session. And I'm really happy in writing up some of the reasons that you all came here to see that there's already elements of this that we are very clearly going to cover, right? Some of this. And please hold us accountable if by the end we haven't hit your particular concern and interest. We will have time at the end for further questions and just remind us and or ask us for more nuance than was covered over the course of the, of, uh, of the session. So I'm thinking about how we're approaching this sort of in three buckets, right? The first is how do students use AI in their career-related searches? And to do a very quick overview, like several of the items that are up on the screen, so identifying opportunities or developing application materials or conducting research for an interview, are things that you might think, well, we could do that with Google, right? Like um, those are still already existent resources that we might be able to do. We are going to talk a little bit about how AI can be more sophisticated, right? About how you would do that in particular with finding um, situations where there is a better fit for the student over um, what they might be able to find using a traditional internet search. And uh, kind of going and finding more in-depth information along all of these, these things. That is probably the most important piece of this, is the assessing organizational fit. And that's sort of a hook to the belonging piece, right? When we titled this session, Finding Belonging Using AI, that was really what we were thinking, that there's there are better ways to be able to make better matches and with more information that you're able to mine better using AI tools that you're going to be able, the student is going to be able 
to take better advantage and find for themselves better fit. Very importantly, salary negotiation, right? Information is power when you're negotiating salaries, right? The more you know, uh, one of the standard things I say in a salary workshop, salary negotiation workshop is like, don't, you know, you should know your position, but the first person to articulate a number is the one who's going to sort of lose, if you like, you know, it's going to set the bar at what the expectations are. So the better you know, like what the market can bear, what that perhaps that individual employer is able to bear and what's reasonable in that uh, particular setting, the more likely you are to be successful in achieving what is a fair and reasonable wage for your position that you're applying for. Uh, moving over to the next uh, block, which is coaches and mentors. So I want to spend a quick minute sort of talking about the way we title this, right? How many of you were able to attend the plenary yesterday, the morning plenary? Uh, so, all right. So at least in the room, most of you uh, were, were able to attend. And there was a lot of, of uh, discussion there about the importance of relationships and connection to people, right? Um, over the course of that and how important that is for all of us. I mean, we're human beings, we like connection. It, you know, the pandemic taught us that, right? It's very hard to be isolated. There's a reason why punishment is imprisonment, right? Um, and so um, one of the points I want to really make here is that this is not a topic, uh, the career advising function broadly described is not a function that is just limited to the career offices around campus, uh, the university office or the COGAD office. But this is something that we all do as a community. We all have a role in it. And one of the things I love about AU, I've been here now 11 and a half years. And one of the things I really love is that that is part of the ethic of the place, it seems to me. Faculty take this on. Uh, various staff roles across campus are really engaged with the idea of making sure that our students not only are learning in the classroom, but also are being able to engage in experiential learning, which leads then to better outcomes after graduation and, and better connectedness for the students across all of our uh, work. So we are going to try to give you some, some tips. I'm seeing up here, you know, one of the things was like, how do I help a student with, um, with a career search? right, when my primary role is not being a career advisor. And we will talk uh, both generally a little bit about that, but then also more specifically about how AI can be helpful as a tool in doing so. Um, and some of the, the points I've made up here are sort of broad categories of things that we will cover over the course of the conversation today, right? And then I also want to spend a little time on the challenges that we all experience. Some of the things I've listed up here are not unique to the career space in AI. These are very broadly, you know, issues that we all have to wrestle with. And I'll be candid, in some of these instances, there is not a um, good solution at the moment. It's not like there's a magic bullet that solves, you know, the issue of bias in, in AI. Anything that is uh, powered by materials that are created by human beings is going to include all the biases that human beings have, right? And so that issue is one that we all are, need to be aware of and wrestle with. One of the principles we're going to try to push out is perhaps, especially in those situations where we can't solve the problem, knowing that students are going to use AI and should use AI moving forward, um, to be to be competitive in the in the workplace, that um, it's how do you use it appropriately? How do you use it ethically? How are you uh, made aware of the issues that you need to be keeping in mind? That's what we're trying to make sure that they're they're aware of. Um, one of the things that that maybe fall on the ethical considerations that I want to focus a little bit in on is. Uh, misrepresentation of your abilities, right? So there's a possibility that when you are dealing with an AI um, chat GPT or what, whichever one of the platforms, and we're going to talk about more than one, um, including perhaps one or two that you haven't heard of um, that could be useful to you, there is the possibility that a student's both innate skills in a particular area and in um, uh, 
probably around language ability, whether that's English or another language, might be um, might be represented in a way that isn't absolutely accurate. This is not really different than mis misrepresentation of your skills in other ways, right? In any of these processes. But, and what, what we usually will be advising students on is like, look, that might get you the interview, but it's probably not going to get you the job. And even if it did, if you can't do the job, that's not going to be a successful work situation for you. So we will really try to advise students on how, again, how to represent their abilities appropriately in the course of this. Um, I think that that's enough for now. Uh, one of the things that, uh, one of the challenges that we have also up there, and just as a transition to talking a little bit about competencies, is this idea that AI has, you know, it's great efficiency and the disruption that I talked about a little bit earlier has the possibility of great elimination of existing jobs, right? And creation of new jobs, of new kinds of ways of doing things and being successful in the workplace. So we want to think about and advise students on how to, in effect, proof your career as much as possible against these unknowns and how to take advantage of existing technology effectively to move forward. One of the ways in which we think that that could be done is through the broad competencies that are more, um, at least as of now, AI cannot do as well as human beings can do, right? And to discuss some of those, I'm going to turn it back to my colleague, Caroline. Yeah, thank you so much, Gihan. I think that was a little a great introduction sort of to the limitations and reminds me of something that um, working with students comes up, at least in the world of business. AI may not take your job, but a person who knows how to use it effectively could, right? Um, so anyways, that's a little transition to the competencies that are offered by NACE, which is the National Association of College and Employers, one of the largest firms constantly researching the world of work, specifically um, for folks leaving colleges. So it connects with career centers, employers, um, technology service providers, all of that. So they found basically across all of the careers, these are some of the eight main competencies. And you'll notice a lot of them they'll pick up in classes with faculty, but also working with the other staff, not just career, that is only one, communication, critical thinking, equity and inclusion, keeping an eye to that, leadership skills, professionalism, teamwork, and of course, technology. So whenever you work with students, these are sort of the broad categories of skills they should be constantly working on to be career ready. Specifically under technology, um, I keep thinking, I recently heard that a lot of some of the top financial institutions um, are using AIs like Hebia to do a lot of financial forecasting and modeling for them. So ways of kind of simplifying or using AI to add to a topic or a subject, and then the person will review it. So instead of them spending hours doing it, they ask technology to, and then the human will look in and review it and make sure it's correct and double check and different things. So knowing how to use AI correctly is a great technology skill set for students going into the career, into the workforce, sorry. Um, so those are just brief competencies, um, but actually if you want to go to the next slide, um, some things, as I mentioned in the first PowerPoint, uh, the world of work is now looking for folks to use AI. There is a whole new job opening called prompt engineers, right? People who spend their entire time focusing on what is the best prompt I can craft to mitigate some of those limitations of AI, but still get the answer we need. How can we use this technology to help us out? So a little bit about how I approach my AI and career workshops is working with students to help them understand how to write the prompts. I may have some knowledge around careers, questions to ask, but at the end of the day, they are the ones who have the specific questions. And so they need to know how to create these. We're gonna to get to an interactive portion where I'm gonna actually ask you, what are some of the examples you've had um, from students asking about career and how can you, of course, feel free to send them to our office. We're happy to help, but maybe you in that moment can turn to AI to kind of also help you build that relationship, that mentorship that is so important for students to feel belonging in. 
A few things to note usually that I approach is, I love this phrase, um, AI uses probability to create possibility, not certainty. I won't get in too technical, but I see some math folks in the back, but it is a lot of algorithms in the back, right? It's researching all of the data up until what, September, 2021, and saying, okay, after this word, this is the most general one when it relates to this cause, to this, to that. So it is probability to create a possibility. So always recommend students double check. They recommended a company, go to Glassdoor, go to the company website, review it. Don't always assume it's correct. So if you wanna click a button, so now we're gonna ask again for folks online on Zoom, please post your questions, um, but also people here in the space. What do you hear when you're working with students in your role about the questions they bring up around careers or the concerns they have? I know we got a few before, but anything specific? We know you've had this conversation. And say, I can pull up from what some faculty have said to me. Um, so, you know, oftentimes they'll get, okay, great, I really love this class and this skill, but what? how can that relate to my future job, right? Who here has maybe had a student very interested in a specific topic or skill set, but they don't know how could deep research into race and identity give me a job, right? We have online. Okay, Amanda said, I hear that they don't know what fields are out there. They don't truly understand what they want a work day to look like. Yes, the day-to-day -day tasks. I might like the concept of being a doctor, but will I actually like doing the day-to-day? -day? I am not someone who does very well with medical things, so I wouldn't do well there. Um, great, well, so we'll have that question in mind to a few prompts, but then I'll ask, since it is silent, I bet there are some concerns from many folks here about how to have this. So what are some things you personally, when a student starts talking or bringing up their career, you go, oh man, shoot, I don't know what to do. What are some of the most concerns you have around speaking about careers with students? Uh, so regarding the first question, Suzanne also mentioned that uh, their study abroad advisor and frequently students have questions about how to talk about their international experience in the job search process. Yes, how to highlight that, especially what skills or competencies if you were just taking courses, right? Um, those are excellent questions. I've had someone talk about they're generating CVs now through AI and tools. <laughs> How do they actually differentiate themselves when maybe the computer does it better? Or if people are using AI also to read the CVs? A lot of, if you're getting a lot of applications, I've heard they're putting it through AI before even a human looks at them. So how do you, you know, change that mindset shift here? Yeah, because I'm dealing with first year students, I don't really talk much about careers, but it, regarding majors. So because I'm in under CAS, um, College of Arts and Science, many of my students are like literature major, sociology major, and they are worried because they also know that it may not be the one of the edgiest major. And of course I say, don't worry, you will all figure out, but it really depends on them, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's my uh, what I hear from them and that's my concern because it can vary so widely depending on the person, not just the major. Yes, absolutely. We'll have one online and then one more in person. Okay. Uh, Christina said that in my previous career advising roles, I would work with psychology majors who realized that they did not want to get a master's degree, but weren't sure what they can do with just a bachelor's in psych. And we would, sorry, and we would do a deeper dive in how they want to apply their degree, but AI would have been a very helpful back then to generate career ideas. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, speaking as a student in the MFA, so kind of a long time, almost perpetual student, 
I wish career discussion would come up more in the classroom as part of the curriculum. And even if that's a discussion to be had at the career center, that that time be built into the syllabus that go at some point, you know, once a month to the career center, have that be an assignment. Or if the focus is learning a skill, then emphasize what is the next step? How is that used as a springboard into the so-called real world? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll never say no to going into classrooms as a career center. Um, but I, I just want to comment for a moment on that because the oh, oh so is right? yeah. um, the um, there is a real initiative on this, right? Like you are exactly on uh, correct is that uh, both for equity reasons and also, uh, and the equity reasons are that, you know, if we rely on students to come in one-on-one -on -one to the career office, we will need many, many, many more staff to be able to serve them effectively, right? The web best way that we can reach students as much as possible is through classes, right? Then whether they want it or not, they're getting information. And I have to say, our faculty here have been fantastic. Every year, really, in my office, Liz is the one who takes the lead on this and um, pushes out to uh, faculty every semester a call for, like, would you like us to come into your class and conduct a session? So I would encourage as students, especially, to make that request of their faculty, which might be then helpful. And we can either come into the class or we can work with the faculty member on creating a class that they deliver, right? Either of those are, are options that we can uh, help with. Um, I'm also happy to say that Anna, uh, Anna, who is in the audience, Anna Littman, has recently, we think it's important enough that we've elevated a specific role for her that is about classroom integration of career competencies, right? As a, part of her responsibilities. They're not all of her job. She's still an advisor um, and doing a wonderful job on the career side, uh, but that is going to be one of her, her focus areas in the coming uh, semester and on. Yes, thank you. Sorry for that interruption. No, 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 it's a good one. It's important to know. <laughs> um, great, so those are a few great ideas that you have given us. Um, and so now I'm actually gonna showcase you using um, one large language model platform I personally appreciate called Perplexity. And I'll kind of go through it about why I prefer this one to maybe a chat GPT. Um, using sort of your concerns from students. Um, but I also will have a slide here with prompts if you have time, we can kind of go through. But notice a little bit on the prompts I've crafted, I am trying to be extremely specific. Entry level positions in the area, right? Work environment similar to this company. If I am jump starting, starting my career as a first gen college student, right? The more specific and accurate in your prompts you can be, sorry, I can get, um, be the better the output will be, right? So keeping that in mind. But I am now going to, oops, yep, sorry, we are moving on to here. Perplexity. So this is one of the uh, large language model generative AI platforms, similar to ChatGPT or Bard or Claude or any of the other opportunities out there. The reason I like this one, you'll see as we type in the question. Um, but my first, one of the first questions we had was helping non-traditional students with career searches. So something I like to say is a student comes to you and says, you know, I really love I'm looking at this, I let's say stat. So I am I am a college student who loves loves I can't loves statistical mod modeling and am interested in international relations. What is a good career for me? So you type it in, like all things, again, probability to create possibility. What I like about perplexity is right after your question, it says sources. These are not the only sources it's pulling from, but it highlights here are the main sources. So you can always go in and check, oh, right, let's click Indeed. What is it saying? So here are 15 jobs you can pursue with an international relations degree. So it can kind of do some of that research for you instead of you digging in, but it also tells you where. 
Great, then it reads an answer. So statistical modeling, you could look into political consulting, an intelligence analyst, diplomatic services, international law, if they even are interested in the legal aspect of it. And it tells them through some of the different aspects and skills they may need. Um, one thing, of course, it didn't show up actually this time, but often shows up when you say college student, it does reference go to the College Career Center. Do you feel to empower the students to connect with us, but they can explore a little bit first. And once they have an idea, go, okay, but what does that mean? What might be the job boards or how should my resume look for that? Then you can send them over to us as well. So let's say this is your student. And then another important part about AI um, prompts here is follow up. If you're starting one conversation on a topic with it, keep in the same conversation going deeper and deeper. Don't always start a new one. Why? Again, AI uses probability to create possibility. The more data you give it, the better it understands the probability to give you a more concrete possibility. Again, yeah. Is there a question? Is there a question? Yeah. Um, so I noticed that it's pulling from five sources, right? It, it probably is pulling also from more, but these are the main sources it's found the information in. Right. So one of the things that we've been talking about is how AI is a tool for expert searchers or people who know something about their topic and not for novice searchers. And it isn't, it's listing Reddit. Correct. <laughs> but it's not listing the bureau of labor statistics so like Absolutely. how do we know that this is accurate great question so that's something to going back that we're going to get at but let's say we say uh the student is interested in an intelligence analyst what is the typical what are let me think um we're asking more on how does that relate to classes um, if I want a career as an intelligence analyst, what should, what skills should I learn? What skills should I learn? So you go in there specifically pulling out and it pulls out some specific, again, cites some of the sources in here, but you can read this. But then you can still go, again, this is probability. We always recommend students, once they've got an idea, you can pull out, go outside somewhere else. So you can go to the occupational handbook created by the government, right? Um, join into their occupation finder and put an intelligence analyst and try to find out, according to the US government, what it is, right? It is a beginning place to start, sort of giving you an outline. Then with a coach with further information, they can dive deeper. But especially, again, belonging and career exploration, they don't even know where to begin, right? What are some of these factors? What are some of the skills and the differences? I want to be a, I like logistics and data. Okay, so be a supply chain manager. Some students don't even know where that is. What is that role? Distribution managers on different things. So this is still a good place to start. Yes, some of the sources, right? Double check it all, we recommend it, but it gives the students an area to start finding that belonging and then dive deeper, either through conversations with you all as if they're doing it in the spot or by coming to our offices. I see I have some questions over here. So say they know what their skill set is, Great. like they've done some deep thinking yep. and they say, I know my skill set, I can do this, this, and this. Is there a way to reverse engineer it and say, these are my skill sets, what, sh what would I be good at? Give me, do you have any skills examples of some students maybe? Or do you want to give me? Okay, um, like communication, leadership. Written, verbal. Written, say they're multilingual, um, problem solving, they're really good in math. Like, I don't know, throw, throwing out like some basic stuff, but just read, read. I want it, because it's interesting because uh, in one way you're saying, I'm I'm interested in this. What should I learn? Is can you reverse engineer it and say this is what I've learned? Where should that, where could that take me? Great. Let's put it in. <laughs> so with communication skills, multilingualism, problem solving, you could be good at translation interpreter. Maybe that's the basic ones we'll think of when we hear that. But customer service, run linguistics related careers or jobs abroad or oh. I mean, it makes sense, but how many of you would think automatically Amazon, right? It is international. You could work at the company in the private sector doing different skills, various roles. But let's say 
those are all still heavily in the language and multilingualism, international uh, mm -hmm. skills. If I don't want to be a translator, but maybe they say they do want to work in the world of nonprofits. You're just about translator. Oh, thank you. Translator. I don't want to be a translator, but want to work in nonprofit non sector. What could be some other roles? And so it does a follow up. Here are some other things with your communication mm -hmm. skills. Again, this is not the end all be all. Okay, great, this is here, I'm gonna keep applying. No, students should go in and explore. We have resources. If you ever, students have questions on career, Handshake is basically their one-stop platform here at um, AU for all questions, concerns, templates, resources, databases, setting up appointments. Um, so we have tons of databases. They can then go in and search. Great, program managing that serve multilingual communities that are doing this. So it can help pull the more specific interests of theirs, right? In thinking back, I did a class on eco-anxiety yesterday, and there was like, it was to fight eco-anxiety, but it's like, what are you passionate about? What are the skills you have? And what is the urgent need? Mm -hmm. Similar to careers, this can kind of help pull that out for them. Mm -hmm. Gives them this little meeting of the three circles, and that is where then, through conversations with you all or with our office, we help them to start exploring and being better prepared to find that specific job. I want to highlight a couple of the points that Caroline is making, um, and that actually that you made earlier. I'm sorry, I don't know your name, Sarah, that Sarah made earlier, uh, which is sort of this issue of accuracy, right? Like there's, or it's pulling so much information. How do we sort of narrow it down to the ones that are relevant? to the particular situation, um, especially when you may not yourself know how to distinguish among these different sources. So I think one of the points Sarah is uh, that Caroline is making is the iterative process, right? To keep going through that. The other is that this can be really useful for you as a non-career specific person to be able to at least get a starting point and use the knowledge that you have to help the student get started. And then we are available as career experts in our particular offices across the campus to be able to perhaps give that more detailed guidance, right? That helps. So that might be one of the ways to think about this as you're thinking about like, okay, this is a little overwhelming. So AI is the tool that helps you get started. And then the student and you can um, get more nuance and perhaps that's enough. That might be enough to get started. And if you need more, then we are available. Put that in. Let's speaking of that. What are some things you can do to help? I just picked a role. What else could you do? So help them assess their interests and skills. Great. What classes do you like? Why that classes? Why this specific professor? The styles of professors are great for later on supervisor positions, right? Who are their supervisors going to be? What do they need in a supervisor? A micromanager who kind of lays everything out, someone who gives them a lot more room for creativity, right? Resources. Hello, career resources. That's us. Yay. Um, but also a lot of different things. So this can give you just the basic steps to have those conversations and build a deeper mentorship and connection with students. Our offices are here. We're not trying to get rid of our jobs at all. Um, but we do think students can see you a, a lot of times throughout the semesters, especially faculty or advising that they meet with regularly. So continue for you all to build that relationship with them can be an extremely beneficial way for them to explore and then come to the services once they're like, okay, but how can we actually apply it? Now, what about the world of work? How does my resume look like? Um, one thing I personally don't recommend students, um, but you will see some other places do it, is I say don't actually use AI to create any of your branding, your resumes. Not that it won't actually do it. In fact, um, it's fascinating if you go say, I'm a business admin major with history working as a waitress and interning with my local controller office. Draft me a resume. I misspelled a lot of things, but it actually will start putting some things on here. Um, specifically on the location, it kind of just gives you the outline. So that's fine, but it's not as helpful as it could be, right? 
we have templates and resources for them to develop it on their own. Some AI actually starts filling that out. They'll say waitressing, served clients like their food and did this and that. And it could be, but is it again exactly what they did? Um, so for this, I wouldn't recommend as much for the creation of content, similar to academia, right? You don't want AI to actually write the paper for the student. We want to see them do the work themselves. Um, but this is a great platform for all of you to uh, really, really explore sort of the options. Right, that's that. Okay. We'll have one last question and then we'll have more Q&A at the end and can go over this more, but there are a few things we want to cover as well. Suppose the the... Suppose the student comes up with the first draft, but we want to use AI to say, well, it's not written as effectively as it could be, or you, you, there's some flaws. How do you do that? Yeah. Um, could so that I'm let me think. Um, so you could say, could you make the following? sentence more active and uh, highlight my Excel skills. And let's say if I think of what students traditionally put is um, uh, analyzed data on Excel. <laughs> Whatever it is. Um, so student can put in some of their specific bullet points. And so it'll go here more active and highlighting your skills. Uh, it's actually, this one's not as great. But it says, you know, hot, sought after our data analysis visualizations, having advanced skills. So being specific, using pivot tails or index match functions. Did you create charts? Were you forecasting, right? It asks them the question, what in Excel did you do? Um, resumes should highlight skills, competencies, and achievements, not average duties or roles or responsibilities, right? So it does ask them some deeper questions for it. Um, I believe I've done this on chat GPT and it may have changed a little bit, but it used to actually write them out the full sentence. Again, a little bit why I like perplexity. It seems to just kind of gear them more towards thinking about things versus kind of always giving it to them. Of course, I haven't played around with chat GPT in a while, um, but this is a platform that I like and it can be used to deepen, but it should not be used to create things. It can summarize, it can research, it can help um, kind of strengthen, but it shouldn't be used for the full creative process, right? Carolyn, do you want to talk about the attach function? Yes, oh, that's also a great one. Um, so this is something you can do on um, perplexity over here, is attach an image, a text, a PDF, anything you would like. So you could, if the student has their resume, actually, I wonder if I have a sample resume somewhere. Um, I should have had that prepped, my bad. But you can upload resumes, you can upload the job description. Mm -hmm. So student is looking at a project management role um, at a nonprofit and it's a long job description and they go, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. Upload it, say, what are the four main qualifications that this job is looking for? It'll upload and it'll pull out. Generally, it'll highlight the part that says qualification mm -hmm. in the job description, mm -hmm. but it's still useful for the students to kind of see and start getting an idea with. Um, one thing to note, if the student does upload resumes, some of this data does go onto the public sphere and sector. So confidentiality is important. Get rid of any personal information, maybe phone numbers or addresses, or they shouldn't be putting things like social security numbers on their documents, but <laughs> things like that. I always recommend just take it out, right? Or go position by position or bullet point by bullet point, um, just to be safe. We don't want information out there that we can neither confirm nor deny, right? Does that help a little bit, the folks? All right, so I know we want to cover a few more things, so I'm going to pass it on. If you do have more questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to save them for the end, um, and we'll be happy to go over them. Great, so that was an example of an external resource using AI. We wanted to talk to you about a few resources we use within our offices um, that we either pay for access to or work in partnership with other offices on to make sure you're aware of them and can refer students to them as well. So as we mentioned, our, our three career centers on main campus work very collaboratively in a lot of ways. One way that's been really rewarding over the last two years is on what's what Deloitte has created that's called the Future of Work Institute. 
Um, and we have a former participant in the room. Thanks for being here. Um, this is a great two-day boot camp where students come in and talk with Deloitte facilitators precisely about these issues of future of work, incorporation of AI, um, resulting in a credential from Deloitte. So that's something we hope to continue offering um, and supports this focus that we have on better understanding this technology. Gihan is a part of a campus-wide working group that's been recently formed um, that's focused on these issues. Um, and I know you want to say something about that. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was referring at the beginning to how my interest started developing, you know, having these conversations and finding that there are numerous people around campus. To make a long story short, Regina Curran in OIT has recently pulled together a group of such people, right? That's quite a large group, maybe 30 people or so. And if this is a topic that interests you, uh, I'm I'm pretty confident, I'm, I didn't actually speak to her, but I'm pretty confident that she'll be open to adding you to that group as we examine kind of what the policy issues and ramifications are across AU uh, to be thinking about this issue. Um, the the group has only met once so far and kind of come up with sort of an outline of like the directions in which we want to go um, as opposed to having already like a draft policy created or something like that. Great. And we've already referred to the workshops that our offices offer and will continue to offer. One thing we've been working on in partnership with each other is creating a new web page on the Career Center homepage where we and I'm going to show you a couple examples from it in just a moment, um, have some prompts that students can use so that we've done a little bit of the work of creating more sophisticated prompts for them to get started. Um, we've referred to a tool that we use every day called Handshake that we want your students to be using. This is where everything career related happens between all of our offices. It's where they can search for jobs and internships, post their resumes, make appointments with us, sign up for events. Um, so it is already, it has thousands and thousands of listings, but it's curated for our students and it has AI incorporated into it. It learns them and their interests. Um, and we are part of uh, beta testing for their own new AI product called Coco that they're calling their career co-pilot. So we're, we're excited to be involved in that from the beginning and giving them feedback on how to improve that service for students. Um, and then after I show you a little bit on our new web page, we'll talk about Big Interview, which is an AI fueled resource we've been using for quite some time now. So this is, um, I'm gonna show you two examples from the page that we're developing. We wanted to have something um, permanently on our website about AI, but that we are updating. So we have a news resource on the side where we're adding uh, external resources that speak to this work and are giving students advice on things like how LinkedIn is using AI, um, how AI is impacting networking. And then we have definitions and we cite different examples of AI tools. So we talk about perplexity, we talk about chat GPT, we give them a sense of like, what are the main ones people are using now and why, and what are they recommended for? Exactly. Liz, one, one thing I meant to say when I was talking right at the beginning was, one of the, the things that we all are aware of, right, is this, this is a constantly changing space. This is a space that is changing in real time. So we, among others, will need to be like really aware and regularly updating. Um, and what we say today may or may not be applicable just mm -hmm. six months from now, right? And there might be a, some pieces of it that are still the same, but the technology itself is changing a lot and new chatbots and, and other platforms are coming up every every day. There's literally not a day that passes that I don't see some article in a major publication about the rapidly changing landscape in AI. So that, of course, affects all of this. And then when you scroll down the page, we wanted to give students examples of specific ways in which they can use AI at every point of the job search. So from career exploration, developing materials, interview prep, and then networking. Um, and I'm 
I, as she knows, very impressed that Caroline was coming up with prompts on the fly here, but we also wanted you to have some pre-made ones that you can refer back to and encourage students to use. So um, to her earlier example, things like what are the top skills or competencies or keywords in this job description? Um, this is, I had a phone call with my older brother last night who is job searching. Um, and it's always fun to help your older sibling, but, um, <laughs> right. Yes. Um, but it was one thing we talked about is the job applying for jobs is so incredibly time consuming and he's a writer. So he knows he wants to write his own materials, but the tweaking it for each application, that is something that he can use AI as an assistant for. So we were talking about these sorts of prompts. Once he has a one really strong foundational version of his materials, how can he go back in and say, adapt this resume or cover letter with these particular focus areas for another job? And he was very impressed by my example. So um, yes, which I didn't make up myself. Um, okay, and then in career exploration, um, we've referred to some of these, um, but th knowing things like technical skills, often students don't understand what goes into the job that they want to do. So making sure that this is something that can impact what curricular choices they're making here, what internship choices, um, exactly. Yes. Yeah, so, um, and of course we've talked about salary throughout, but um, not just what are salary ranges somewhere, but what is actually a reasonable salary for the place in which you want to live. So we all live in this area and know just how expensive it is. Um, but this salary would make us live quite a different life if we were in Iowa. So helping them understand those nuances we think is important. So there's a lot more of this on the webpage as well. And then finally, I want to give a shout out to the library <laughs> because they're such a great partner to us. Um, and not all of these resources involve AI, but to your earlier question, we want students to be drawing from really robust research sources. So over the years, we have worked with them to develop this page specifically on library resources for career research. So the page is much longer, but I wanted to highlight it allows students to get at some of the things we referenced in the beginning. What isn't the actual company culture? It has There's a lot of access to things like salary range in here. Students can even find um, staff listing. Some organizations, it's really hard to find out who actually works there. They don't have names posted on websites. So allowing students to understand the structure, the hierarchy, even titles, and then they can reverse engineer a search on LinkedIn. Um, so this, um, we want to draw attention to this because a lot of work on behalf of the library went into this, and we think this is a really strong resource too especially after they explore a little bit on AI, right, in that specific role, send them here. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And then I mentioned um, we've been using a resource called Big Interview for quite some time. Um, and in the career, I, I teach a career exploration course along with my colleague Alyssa, who's here, and we have students do an assignment using Big Interview. They're always, like, a little bit scared to do it. But we tell them this is... Um, even pre-pandemic, but definitely since a lot of first interviews are being done using video. And this gives them the opportunity to practice that and to get feedback using AI that's really advanced. So Caroline's going to talk a little bit more about Big Interview. Yeah, um, it's great. Um, also for folks as you're advising, not just for careers, admissions into grad schools, medical interviews, different aspects of it. But if they also just want to practice, sometimes I work with students on their general speaking skills, there are some basic questions like tell me about yourself that are used in interviews that can help them work on their elevator pitch or can help them work on their introductions for different things. Um, so all students at AU have access to that through Handshake. They can create their, they link their account, they go in, choose their option, they'll get a screen like this with a list of questions and it will video and audio record them. Recording all stays and big interview, so no worries there. Um, and then once they finish answering the question, if you click the next slide, 
They'll receive after a few minutes this AI-generated feedback, as long with an action plan, but mostly to focus on the feedback. Um, this was an example I did. Um, so yay, luckily I didn't do too bad at answering. Um, so the answer relevance check, I answered this question. You can click on the learn more button and it will try to connect some of the things you said with what this question was looking for, right? Pace of speech. Good, this is a good pace of speech. They can understand me. Remember video, audio is sometimes difficult. So the more moderate pace of speech is extremely important. I unfortunately did use a few ums, um, four of them. I used a few more filler words. So those were like, so, uh, well, right? Um, however, surprise, my language is confident and enthusiastic. So very powerful answers over there. Um, and my vocabulary was smart yet accessible, right? So this is just some general information it can give to students to sort of get them prepared and thinking about, all right, how do I even communicate that with others? Um, so this is a great platform we love to use. Um, recommend if your students are interested, tell them they can find it on Handshake, absolutely. And they also don't have to figure it out, or you don't have to figure it out on your own. We do a lot of consultations with faculty and have developed question or and big interview and we have developed question sets specific to your discipline. So if you want to have a math specific question set or a literature specific one, that's something that we can work with you. So it really feels like students are practicing the actual types of questions that they're going to get asked. So that's our hope with all of this is that we're using a bit of AI, but using our human experiences to help you come up with something that's more sophisticated to prep your students. Great, and now I think we have a few minutes mm -hmm. left. I'm happy to now turn over as well if you're online. Any questions, follow-up, concerns? This part is more of us now kind of workshopping through your thoughts on this, um, and we're here to help you think about them. Yes. Thank you. I'm Diane. I work in the Career Center too. Um, and then also I'm in grad school and I have more of a comment, but I found it's really helpful to use AI to get feedback on either assignments um, by presenting the rubric or the, the um, assignment description. And then my work in asking more open-ended questions of what are ways I can improve this? Do you think I'm meeting all the criteria? What are areas I can beef up? And I've done a couple of very similar things with cover letters and found it to be really helpful. So instead of telling me what to write, um, using it as a tool when the career center is closed because it's 10 p.m. and I'm, you know, finishing up something, um, I found to be really helpful. And so I, I don't think I've heard a lot of that in encouraging students to use AI in this way. And I really would encourage it. I found it's been very helpful. I know some classmates have used it to give them like mock grades on assignments that have been pretty in line with what professors have ended up giving them on the assignment too. Um, so I found that really helpful. I wanted to share. Thank you so much, Diane. That's so yeah. helpful. Um, and, and also we should have said at the beginning, this is not just you asking us questions. We love that it's also comments and thoughts from the audience um, on how we can all work together on these issues. Yesterday, I attended a session, I don't know what some of you did, that Betsy Cohen and three of our students, or two of our students and somebody else were in, which I thought was really interesting. And one of the students talked about how they used AI as a study buddy, right? And it sort of has some, some similarities to what you're talking about, Diane, in your role as a grad student. And I found that fascinating and really interesting, you know, kind of as... How can you make your work better, like starting out from, from that point? And certainly there's applications in the career space for exactly that too. Yes, uh, those, those are great points, but something, I'm not sure why, Diane, but it, it reminded me earlier when someone was saying, oh yeah, how does companies use AIs reviewing resumes? One thing to note is ATS's applicant tracking systems have actually been around using AI more automation since the 90s. So it is actually not new in most companies. Um, and that's something to talk about why you should pull out those keywords and really understand the job description to make sure you're hitting what the automatic applicant tracking system is searching. But AI in the way of automation is not new for companies um, reviewing resumes. You always advise, for example, that a student, and this is, you know, for years and years, that a student would 
personalize the cover letter to each individual employer that they're writing. It might seem obvious, not always done, mm -hmm. right? Especially when people are doing like little bits of mass mailings to uh, similar sectors, they might, uh, this makes it much easier to do that, mm -hmm. right? And similarly, I, I usually say, look, it, it's I know it's hard to like personalize your resume when you're sending out maybe 15, 20 resumes, you know, in a, in a search. Um, again, this is one of those places where you can do that thing that helps with applicant tracking mm -hmm. systems, uh, where you can upload your resume and the job description and say, what are the words that I should be incorporating in here? Or can you, you know, tweak find synonyms for the skills they're seeking so that I can include them in my resume, et cetera. Any more questions, concerns, follow-ups? Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in the back and then right up here. I only. Uh, Liz, you mentioned that you teach a career exploration course. What department would that be listed under and what semester does it tend to be offered? So it's for juniors and seniors, unfortunately, but, um, and we have a first, we don't have a grad student version of it, but um, but we can meet with you and what talk to you. Masters of Science. CAS. Yes. yes. Yeah. In, uh, in the School of Communications, um, Film and Media Arts. Film okay. and Media Arts. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We, we can share the activities we would do in that class with you for sure um, and have our career advisors work with you. I also have a very interested, interested, self-interested question. Even for presentations, the big interview tool seems amazing. Mm -hmm. Do staff and yes, faculty have access point. to big interview? Because imagine you have to do a presentation in front of students or the dean's council or whoever, and to be able to do it first yeah. to the big interview and get some good feedback. I think even for us, we should be using the tools our students have mm -hmm. access to. Mm -hmm. We should, yes. Can we? I'm gonna say that's above that my be... pay grade. <laughs> if I, yeah. I'll chime in first while while we ruminate on that. Um, big interview is great, but there is so it's not as much the video um, side, but there is for audio and more technical interviewing, but could be good through Google. It's called interview .warm -up com maybe but if you go search up interview warm-up it is powered by google's ai um, and you can audio or written write something and it will provide feedback on that just not the visual and you can craft more practice prompts and like your speech into ai but okay. about big interview i actually don't know the answer to sheena but i'm happy to research it mm -hmm. uh, many of these products are based on the number of students who use it, right? Like our licensing agreement with the Chill. with our mm -hmm. platform. Um, my hunch is that on a one-off basis, it certainly would mm -hmm. be fine. Um, but I I need to look more into whether mm -hmm. we can sort of make it wide, much more publicly and widely available. There's some colleagues that sure. I'm picking up mm -hmm. who I'd like them to do some presentations, but they're not as. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. at ease mm -hmm. with the activity and that would help really in, help them in their development um, and have better student engagement when they're talking to the students. Mm -hmm. So my, my name is Alyssa. I'm also a career advisor. I think that the tool that I haven't used it, but I don't think big interview is as great of a fit for what you're looking for because it's, it's not like it's, it's this kind of interview, a quite like the, there's sort of a pre-recorded question and then answer and then pre-recorded question and answer. It's not a space to just freeform give a presentation. Yeah. So it's, unless you were able to take that. Yeah, so I think it would be much more of an interviewing. It's much more designed more of an interviewing technique, but what it, it was interview warm up was the, mm -hmm. but there might be other spaces for that. Yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of um there's probably plenty of other AI platforms if you search in for that. Again, interview warm-up, it is still more focused on interviews, but it can give you some good feedback occasionally. Um, but yeah. I am just um, in our last few minutes here, just took a quick look at the list of questions or things that brought you here that we were trying to keep track of. 
And I hate to say it, but it seems like everything is like, just put it into a chat bot, right? <laughs> like the, like that, that seems to be sort of the, the unsophisticated answer. Um, I would love for you, like, so for example, grad degrees, we didn't talk about that specifically, mm -hmm. but um, if you have questions about which grad degrees might be suitable for careers in whatever, that's a question you can craft a prompt for. And similarly, if you don't do your grad degree and want to um, see what you can do just with a bachelor's in psychology, I think somebody asked that um, on here. Uh, again, pop that in and do some iteration on it. And hopefully that'll at least get you started before you talk to your faculty member or academic advisor yeah. um, or career advisor on how that might all play out. And again, on our new web page, we list, I think, five different um types of ai that can be used for these prompts so there may be one that's more suited to one prompt over another and i'll happy to offer if folks do have further questions you can feel free to reach out my email is just caroline fh at american um, and i'm always happy to work i love this stuff so happy to work through prompts and ai thank you all I yes. as good as Caroline mm -hmm. is on the prompt. You know that? Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't want to offer you all like, without your permission. Welcome to offer, offer, I think, both of us up mm -hmm. um, just for whatever outreach, uh, you know, issues that you have. My email is my first name, Gihan, G-I-H-A-N, at American Value. It's very easy. And mine is my last name, Romig. At, uh, and, and we will send out materials and any of the links we referenced today too. But we're always happy to talk to you about how to tailor this to your class or your program. Um, and just thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. What's the the number, the, the 503? 503. Okay. Right. So what's the next one? That